Hello, my name is Sarah. I'm a PhD student from the Embodied Learning Experience Lab at the University of Florida. Today, I will be presenting You Write Your Own Story, Design Implications for an Interactive Narrative Authoring Tool to Support Reflection for Mental Health and College Students on behalf of my co-author, Dr. Sharon Lin Shu. I'll start us off with the basic premise of our work. Firstly, we note that our mental health is highly dependent on how we engage with our personal narratives, and prior research has theorized that we indeed even construct our lives and realities in the form of narratives. It follows, then, that mental health therapy often incorporates the patient's personal narrative, and there exist many techniques which involve engaging with these narratives, from narrative therapy to life reflection. Among these exists a common thread of narrative restructuring, or reconceptualizing one's personal narrative to improve mental health and outlooks on life. I ask that you hold on to these ideas as we move on to our identified problem area. In our work, we target college students as a population in need of mental health support due to high rates of anxiety and depression. For this group, a combination of high demand for mental health care and familiarity with technology has created a space for several digital support tools. However, few if any of these digital approaches support the narrative process found in therapy and reflection, even though for populations such as college students, their narratives are often in a state of flux due to several life changes. To address this problem, we propose interactive story authoring to support a therapeutic process of reflection in college students. Interactive story authoring describes the space of research and the design of tools which allow for the authoring of nonlinear narrative artifacts. A popular example, Twine, is shown here. We believe interactive story authoring is poised to support reflection in college students for two key reasons. One, our personal narratives are inherently nonlinear for how they branch out into future possibilities. And two, these tools provide a basis for the design of interfaces, which allow for the externalizing and restructuring of nonlinear narratives. However, these tools do not provide the kind of guidance we might find in a therapeutic setting. We seek to investigate the design of interactions in an authoring tool that supports independent reflection, as well as to evaluate the impact and benefits of our proposed approach. As an initial step in this investigation, we conducted an interview study with college students and counselors. Given the applied nature of the work, we found it pertinent to begin our research in this area with an exploratory approach that would help us understand how one might design an authoring tool to support reflection in college students and bring to light specific needs and challenges the proposed tool need to address. The goals of our study were trifold. Firstly, we wanted to understand how college students naturally guide their own narratives through reflection and maintain their mental health. In a similar vein, we also wanted to understand how counselors who treat college students form narratives with students and guide them over time as they aim to support their mental health. Lastly, from these understandings, our goal was to derive general aims for the design of the proposed tool, which served to provide future avenues for research in this area, as well as initial implications or direction for design. Our chosen methodology was the grounded theory method, which involves an iterative process of analysis. This analysis resulted in a mapping of themes which served to provide the understanding we sought through the first two goals of our study. These themes were then used to derive design aims as per the third goal of our study. As mentioned previously, the source of our data was open-ended interviews which we conducted remotely with participants over Zoom. Interview themes and questions were derived from the goals of our study and revised as necessary between rounds of analysis. In total, we conducted 16 interviews with 14 college students and two counselors. We concluded the study upon establishing that we had sufficient data to derive significant implications for design. Here, we have the two mappings of themes extracted from our interviews via our analysis. The maps consist of our theoretical codes, each occupying a labeled block in the figure, which draw connections and establish relationships between these themes, and are supplemented with further detail by the focus codes that are encapsulated by them, which are indicated in the figure by the smaller blocks attached to each theoretical code. Here we have the number of theoretical and focus codes for each mapping. For brevity, we won't go over these mappings in detail, and instead discuss the most relevant ones as we describe our design aims. To quickly recap, our third research goal was to derive design aims for an interactive story authoring tool to facilitate the process of reflection on college students' personal narratives. Seven aims in total were extracted from the theoretical and focus codes of our analysis, and we discussed potential implications for design under each. It should be noted that the presented implications for design are comparable to sensitizing concepts. Thus, their value is less than their prescriptive nature and more than their ability to generate novel designs in future work. For brevity, we present a handful of the more interesting design aims here. Details of the rest can be found in our paper. For each design aim, we will first present the overarching design implications we derive from the aim and the relevant theoretical and focus codes that led to these conclusions, shown in bold and italics, respectively. 
Then, for each design implication, we discuss how it could potentially be implemented or accomplished in the design of the proposed tool. Our first design aim was that the tool should allow the author to externalize and manipulate individual experiences in a manner that allows for easy reflection. The codes shown indicate the need to overview the narrative in a way that allows for easy comparison and isolation of relevant experiences. We found that reflection often involves the pairing of experiences in causal terms. In interactive stories, causal relationships between events are common, though in reflection the same memories may be restructured or reused depending on the topic of reflection. Thus, the tool shall allow the author to create multiple configurations of life experiences, connected differently based on the context of reflection, and be able to visually manipulate the boundary between past and present experiences and future ones. We propose the term reflection context to describe a specific configuration of externalized experiences for the purpose of reflection. Lastly, in the context of existing authoring tool paradigms, we suggest that a graph-based format could best support the process of reflection. This paradigm is perfectly situated to scaffold the author's process of extracting specific experiences and restructuring the narrative by merit of an interactive visualization of the narrative structure. Twine is an example of such an authoring tool which falls under this paradigm. Our second design aim was that the tool should support the process of narrative reflection in a therapeutic way. Through this aim, we identify key aspects of the reflection process undertaken by college students that the tool should aim to support. Our codes indicate the existence of an assessment phase where the student reviews their experiences and the goals of reflection. This is followed by a second phase where the bulk of reflection exists and the narrative branches into future possibilities through asking what options there are. In the second phase, it is important to challenge the students' perspectives or assumptions, similar to how counselors use probing questions to make patients reconsider their thoughts and ideas. Thus, the tool should begin the assessment phase by aiding the author in identifying the topic or goals of reflection. Given that students' personal narratives exist both within and outside of the tool, the tool must be continuously updated with relevant experiences. We propose that the tool accomplishes this during this phase through prompts and questions which guide the author in recording their experiences into the tool. In the second phase, through the use of probing or reflective questions, we can expect narrative restructuring to occur as the author is asked to question their initial telling of the narrative. Thus, the second phase should also allow for easier revisiting of already authored experiences to review and compare them as well as to update them with new thoughts and perspectives. Our third aim was that the tool should lower barriers to and promote motivation. Codes that showed how students have low motivation for existing approaches to reflection on their personal narratives, such as journaling, as well as codes where counselors shared that students don't always have the motivation to engage in therapy sessions, portrayed a clear need to promote motivation and lower barriers in engaging college students in mental health interventions. This is unique to our proposed approach in that traditionally, the author is self-motivated to create an interactive narrative artifact, thus authoring tools don't have an inherent need to motivate or engage student authors in the use of their tool. For the proposed tool, this issue of motivation could be addressed by providing flexibility in the authoring method, such as by allowing students to author and play back their narratives by both text and speech as not all enjoy writing. Additionally, in order for the tool to be easily accessible when the user is prompted to reflect, the best platform may be a mobile or cross-platform application. Lastly, gamification, or the use of game-like mechanisms outside of games, has been explored in mental health technologies to increase adherence to and engagement with a given intervention, and could also be used to reward students for engaging in regular reflection. While traditional authoring tools only need to concern themselves with a singular input, output, and platform, and have no issue of author motivation, thoughtful design in these regards could go far in the adoption of an authoring tool that promotes regular reflection. Our fifth and final design aim that we'll discuss that we present here is the tool should capture and be informed by the author's identity. The codes under FOCI, which contain various FOCI or priorities in students' narratives, and the counselor interview codes shown, suggest that for a proposed authoring tool, the author's identity as they undergo the authoring process is uniquely important, not just the end created product. This is natural, given that the story in question is composed of the author's own life experiences. The system should thus capture relevant aspects of the author, both in promoting motivation and providing guidance. To accomplish this, the system should analyze the author's narrative or behavioral patterns and bring attention to them, as a counselor might during a session. This may require some form of artificial intelligence or natural language processing, as the system will need to analyze the author's content and draw appropriate conclusions from it. Further research is needed to determine precisely what aspects of the author should be captured and how it should be utilized in the system. As I draw to the end of this presentation, it's important to note that in the context of the broader literature, 
we found that prior interactive storytelling technologies to support mental health or reflection either require the intervention of a therapist or fail to actively facilitate a process of reflection, but rather aim to incite it. Our proposed approach is unique in that it would actively support a process of reflection in an application that can be used alone without the need for access to a counselor, thus addressing the need for accessible self-help intervention that involves the personal narratives of students, which are so critical in the maintenance of their mental health. To conclude, our work contributes initial aims for the design of an authoring tool to support reflection in college students. This fills a gap in the existing space of prior interventions that fail to address the narrative restructuring found in therapy by an approach deeply rooted in the way we conceptualize life as narrative. Thank you for listening.